All right, we are go. Coffee regular podcast. Uh, we're in the middle of our uh, nitro coffee conversation. There's just so many. I mean, now it's like nitro is the hot thing. This there are season, options now, yeah. Yeah, and like now you're having options. You can get it at some gas stations, depending on where you are. I mean, UDF uh, is the boost. Slap on UDF, you know, real quick. <laughs> I've hit that uh, up a couple times now on dude, the way. Yeah. Like, on like the way. If, I'm in the, if I'm in the neighborhood, I'm like, shit, yeah. Yeah. You know, cold brew. No. It's like I wouldn't go there normally for pretty much anything else, but like. No, but the cold brew's okay, man. And it's, it's like a buck fifty for yeah. a small. Yeah, like generally cheap two, for what it is. Two fifty like, for a freaking ginormous. Serve yourself, get out. <laughs> yeah, it's nice, man. So that's why I appreciate those types of things becoming more available. Heck yeah, dude. Yeah, especially for someone who doesn't like to talk to people or like minimize talking to people if I can mm. help it. Like, just my social anxiety would be like, hot coffee, and I wanted the cold nitro. So. <laughs> you need to go to the grocery store with my godmother yeah. and learn how to talk to people. Yeah, yeah. That's how I learned how to do it. Just like chit chat. <laughs> just chit chat with everyone. Yeah. yeah. Well, so we got the Brazilian sunset cooking. Mm hmm. Brazilian sunset it's hot. So tropical. It's nice, isn't it? It's like very light, balanced. Get them some coconut in there. This guy likes some coconut, some like hazel, hazelnut mm-hmm. kind of thing going on. Yeah. Like, I don't know. And it doesn't have like quite the the bitterness. Mm. The bitterness isn't there. Not super smooth. But yeah, totally digging it. Yeah, it's good for the summer months. It is. Yeah, I'm gonna do. I'm gonna cold. I'm gonna cold press it um, here in the next few days. See what's up. Should be good. So right, by so the time this if episode time. comes out, right, like, I'll be back from the land. Will you be back? I think so. Okay. At least I'll be coming back. I'll be in the process. How long are you going to be in the land? Like, uh, We're going Saturday until the following Tuesday. Oh, you might know. Um, hopefully this will come out before you get back then. There we go. Yeah. If I, can get, if I can get my stuff together and yeah. actually get stuff done. Summertime is a st- strange time for me. I'm actually... Summertime's rough for everyone, man. I, 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 want, I don't want to call it rough. I mean, I slept in today, you know, but it's fine. <laughs> You're like, that's rough to that's, you. That's totally rough, bro. <laughs> it's no, but it's, timing's weird. Sure. Because there's a, lot of, there's a lot, of, lot of shit that I do when my daughter's at school. Yeah. She's not at school. So, yeah. And so, like, what am I going to do? Like, I feel bad. She's just kind of chilling in the house right now. She doesn't yeah. care. She's playing. She's, she's like, she's like, cool. But like, what are you gonna do? Like, I, I'm gonna do stuff with her. You know, yeah. we're gonna hang yeah. out. We're spend time, which means I'm not gonna do other things. Right. And that's man, that's man. fine. So yeah. like, but stuff stacks up weird. Like, I really need to mop my floor. Yeah. I've not gotten yeah. to yet. Well, we'll do that together when you, when you after you leave. Mm-hmm. But uh, <laughs> you know that, that's the thing too. You find ways to get the same things done. You know, yeah. Eventually, yeah. like. Yeah, you just gotta get it done. It's fine. But yeah, it's just, it's funny, the summertime schedule is very different. Yeah, that's what I've noticed, like, my kids' class is, like, super sporadic. Some days I'll have, like, a ton of them, then one day I'll have, like, one or two, depending if the weather's nice. Yeah, like, everyone's at the pool stuff, or yeah. whatever, yeah. You know, where it's super hot and everyone's wearing gi, like. <laughs> yeah. That's uh, funny how that works. I don't know, I mean, just because I've been doing it for however long, like, in summers and shit, like, I don't really care. Like, it just doesn't fucking bother me. No. Put on your gi, it soaks through, you're fine. <laughs> yeah, I don't care. Like, I mean, it's funny. You know, now at Ronin, it's it's stupid-ass hot in the evenings yeah. now. It's yeah. finally got there. But like, it doesn't bother me. Right. Like, I mean, I'm used to that. You know, but everyone else is like, you know, you tell the new people. So, they, like, they thought it was hot, and then people they that have been there for a long time are like, <laughs> nah, got it's hot. not hot. And it was like, like introducing people to the murder loft. Mm-hmm. Like, it started to get warm, then and those of us that have been there for a long time are like, eh, just wait. It's fine. Yeah. yeah. Don't worry about it. Just wait till and then, fucking August. Like, and then, you know, August hits and it's a thousand degrees up there. Straight humidity. You're just and in the gi. You're drowning. Just drowning. Every, and after good. class, everyone basically just strips and lays <laughs> Yeah, just lays there for a uh, yeah. It's the good life. <laughs> yeah. Ah, the murder loft. Mm-hmm. It still holds a place in my heart. Uh, always will. <laughs> <laughs> Occasionally put class up there just to test people's mentality. Yeah. I mean, they still do See, a test their grit. Up there. And everyone's always fully coated when they come back down. Yeah. Fresh shirts, fresh shorts. You should, whole just, shebang. You should just turn that into a sauna up there. It's just natural, do. just natural sauna. Stick a heater in there in the little corner. Yeah. Yeah. You don't need shit. Just, I don't know. They gotta do something about those stairs. You die. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that was like my biggest fear when I was still doing kids up there. Is like, oh yeah. Fucking that was my hundred like, percent. I was like, Jesus, like we gotta go downstairs. Yeah, between the possible. exposed beams and the <laughs> stairs, like, Teaching, like take no. downs, like, or anything. Yeah, that has to cover any distance. Like, nah, <clears throat> nah, ain't, ain't happening. happening. Ain't happening. Yeah, so that's some scary stuff. That we got some bigger space. Yeah, no. 
bigger space that's flat and you can walk into. Yeah, yeah. You know. Even like G wax better downstairs. All this stuff fits better. I mean, the more space you have, the better stuff is. Uh, yeah. It helps. I mean, the upstairs has its has its certain ambiance. Oh, it has a lot of charm. It does a lot of charm. Uh, but you can't pack thirty plus people up there to do shit. Like no, <laughs> you can't. Your classes get too big. Yeah. That that's should be. Um, you know, they should turn that into like. I don't know, like a like a test to get in sort of thing, mm -hmm. of like your intro classes should be up there in August. Right, right, right. And everyone Which should be required to wear two layers of clothing. Right passage intro, and like, like <laughs> if you live, you can go downstairs you are and worthy. train. <laughs> 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 Shit, I mean, yeah, just depending on the schedule, sometimes that does happen. Yeah, like they do go up there and whatnot. You know, uh, and it's rough. <laughs> but that's life's character building, you know. That's yeah. good. Sonas. Yeah. Love Simons. Heat shock proteins, awesome. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. What mm. you been getting into this week, training wise? Um, starting phase three of my summer training. Yeah. So I've up to. Um, I've been doing um, convict conditioning stuff, like you know the book convict conditioning. Mm -hmm. Well, they have videos on Prime right now that explain all the different exercises and the and the progressions of all the things that are in the book. That's cool. And I was just kind of looking for, I'm on kind of a learn stuff from the people kick yeah. this year. And I was, I saw it, I'm like, you know, I've never read this book. I always wonder what this is. And it's amazing. Really? It's so good. And so I kind of, um, I was, I was doing, um, like back arches. You put your hands on the ground and like back up. Then there's a progression for that in convict conditioning, which is really cool. So I'm just following the progression. Right. Mm -hmm. And they're like, you should, um, pair this with hanging leg lifts. I'm like, okay, I'm doing that progression. Mm -hmm. And um, I just, I started at step one and I'm at step three now. Mm -hmm. And I like, I'm really slowly moving it up. I'm, you know, and it's been really cool. I really like it. That's what you like. I like body weight training, period. Yeah. I'm a big fan. Big but fan. Um, it's just, you know, it's stuff I know. But there's aspects of it I don't know. Yeah. I could go deeper. I could break it up into bits. I can go through steps. I can understand. You know, and then plus it's just good for, you know, the hips been realigning a lot. Having my knees getting weird because of that. Mm -hmm. You know, just, you know, good stuff's been happening. A lot of things turning back on. And so it's good to go to back to the beginning. Yeah. yeah. And really, really bare bones easy you know it do this a better foundation to and build on. then the, yeah the foundation becomes a lot better which is cool and so that's really been helping and then i've been working on um end range strength mm -hmm. so let me explain what that is of um man this is supposed to be the next episode too <laughs> Son this, of this, bitch. Is a precursor. this is a precursor we're doing a strength edition episode a little, a little when, when, when mike gets back from the land appetizer but um end range strength so i've been doing arms locked out stuff mm -hmm. so my arms are perfectly straight in different positions so i'm doing handstand holds i'm doing supinated ring holds mm -hmm. i'm doing just like i get on my uh, perfect push-up and just push go like this you know side plankage yeah, yeah. stuff That's like awesome. that just full extension because all your injuries almost almost all injuries are going to happen in one or two places either direction change mm -hmm. so sudden stop sudden switch sudden in direction change, yeah. or at a weak point in a joint mm -hmm. which Full extension. Right. Yeah. You know, so, uh, you know. Arm bars, knee bars. Arm, yeah, 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 that's how All it is, right? Stuff, yeah. Well, so <laughs> if, you, if you work extension and strength in extended positions, then you hit all these little stabilizer muscles and the joint, the joint cavity learns how to act and stuff, you know, and mm -hmm. yeah, it helps. Yeah. So um, that's kind of my summer. And then on the weekends, I'm hitting the push sled just because it's summer. And that's what yeah. I do on the weekend. Push sled's fun. Push sled, pull sled. I push 305 fat pounds over the weekend. It's a fat bastard. That's a lot for me, man. Yeah. I'm, I'm like 154. Yeah. Like, I, I pushed it till it didn't move. Like, I got to a point where I couldn't move it anymore. I was like, <laughs> <"All right." laughs> <laughs> Which is like one and a half times of my distance. Yeah. And I was like, I had to start taking weights off. It was really funny. I'm like, I finally found it. Uh, yeah. <laughs> awesome. So that was cool. I was working with, I went over to Next Level Gehanna with my buddy to do like an MMA workout. Mm. And uh, 
they had a tank. You know what the tank is? It's mm. like a sled, but with like resisted tires. So like it's always rolling, but it's gonna uh, push back as much as you're pushing in. Oh, so neat. it's always gonna be kind of like almost like progressively uphill. So you can load the fucker with however much weight you want, and you're pushing, and it's still gonna be just always That's constant. Fun. Like, yeah, it's it's pretty sweet. Like it's not gonna if you push it, it's not gonna like roll. You know what I mean? You have to fucking constantly mm. engage and drive it. Like oh. you have to steer it and stuff. Like it's it's a beast. That's that reminds me of a story. Yeah, my um. My girlfriend in college, what the hell did she drive? Was it a was it this, this Nissan four-door like tank thing, man? It was like a it was like a normal-looking car, but it was heavy as yeah. fuck. It broke down once because it was right around the corner from the library I worked at, which is just a moderate little hill and a turn, and then a little bit more hill. Mm-hmm. And like I pushed that thing up that hill by myself oh, while she was driving. I'm like, pop it in neutral. I got it. <gasps> just you know, tanking. Just and like tiny ass me, I was still 135 at the time <laughs> with my big Chuck ass hair. Like it was like hair. Goku pushing a car. <laughs> and people were just looking because it's the middle of the day. You know, yeah. I'm like, turn the wheel. I got it. <laughs> <day later. laughs> it's like straight but, up adrenaline. Just you know. I mean, you know, I always say like you know. Yeah, do the simple thing unless a pretty girl's watching. Then, then you gotta show the, off. Then do the thing. Then do yeah. the thing. Then you show off. I'm like, well, my girlfriend's here. I can't punk out in front of my girlfriend. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's pretty, gonna give you that extra push. The pretty girl's driving, man. It's her yeah. car. Go! Ah! Oh, fuck that shit up. Don't do it. Not now. Like, knees, whatever. Don't fail me now. <laughs> yeah, I did it. I did it, man. I pushed it all the way to the parking lot. Yeah. yeah I got her in a parking or a parking space or something. Yeah. I got where she could get towed. Mm. Savior. <laughs> Mm. <laughs> it was a satisfying moment. Mm. Yeah, that's. I've had to push a few cars here and there, yeah, for several different reasons, but yeah. Yeah, it's always kind of cool. They're a great workout tool if you fucking don't have sleds and weights and stuff. They really are, Anton Kasnick, man. Yeah, take your truck to a hill. Push that car up the mountain. Push that fucker up. Yeah. You know? That's how it works. Yeah. Preferably do it with a partner, though, so yeah. when the brakes doesn't run you over. Yeah. Alright, that happens too. Definitely pair up. Yeah. Because uh, <laughs> if you just try and run around back real quick and start pushing, it's probably not going to work Yeah, out it, it ain't happening. Yeah. <laughs> the thing has to be a neutral to move, and if you're on a hill, it's going to roll. You're going to die. Yeah, you might, yeah. It's possible. But you get all the precursor stuff right, you'll be fine. Yeah, yeah, sure. Safety first. Safety. <laughs> all right, so we're at, we're, at a, we're at a turning point in the conversation. Yeah. I'm going to give you a choice. Choice. Do we go into strength and conditioning? Or should we steer into what we wanted to talk about today, which was positive language? Because we can go both ways. I think we should save strength and conditioning and play it back, probably. Yes, because then you can tell me about like, yeah, like, like crazy Nordic stuff. Yeah, because, yeah, uh, I mean, I think this, this trip will change a lot of things too, just all over, so. Yeah. Um, definitely interested to see what that looks like afterward but um positive speech like positive speech positive talk positive everything like that like relates back to the, the crap i just wrote on instagram like yeah you stuff know, you just wrote on instagram is perfect but there's nothing and also i mean even what we're just now talking about mm-hmm. we're you know i mean we're, it's a positive spin on like i mean maybe positive spin on like you suck so train more yeah uh, or yeah. Uh, I think well, a lot of what we talk about is like we know stuff sucks. We know this is bad, quote unquote, or you know not pleasant. Yeah. But I think we give but, you guys the building blocks to help and kind of you know get through that. Yeah, the cloud has the silver lining. Yeah. But yeah. what is the silver lining? Well, here's how you look at it. Yeah. We live for the silver lining we, sometimes. Yeah, like just, in the, in the shitty live ass in cloud, it. dude. Like yeah, yeah well, you'll look for that. that yeah, you just live that there. Hot cup of coffee at the end of the day. You know whatever. Like for sure. Some it makes the simple things, stuff, man. Yeah, it makes the simple things way right. better well um okay so i sent you a text about this one mm-hmm. but i was like i've been dying to do a strength conditioning episode but we also need to do uh one on positive speech on mm-hmm. like uh, i don't even know i kind of have to look at the text remember exactly what i said and you're like where'd you get that from yeah i was like what the I hell that, that was uh not like out of the blue it's plenty on the line of what we talk about but uh, uh, usually you won't say something like that unless something happens so yeah like, What's up? Like, <laughs> my, my reply was in-laws. Yeah, he just said that, and I was like, all right, all right, all right, all right. that comes from all right. <laughs> all right, so we're, we're, we're like, went to, went to the in-laws, my wife's, uh, my wife's family, and, um, this one thing, like, sparked it, and 
um, a different people were talking, and someone came up to me, and she was like, "You're disgustingly tan." What? And she was being sarcastic, mm -hmm. but I started thinking about it, and so as we're talking, I started kind of, we're talking, and I'm listening to everyone else, and everyone's kind of playing the "my life is worse" game. Uh, and like you could see like it kind of started into the room it started as sarcasm but yeah, then everyone's yeah. sort of bouncing it back and forth because i mean there's a little bit of truth behind jokes that's what i'm saying that's yeah there's a lot of truth behind jokes that. you know but like i stopped playing that game years ago yeah and like at one point they were talking about like office jobs and my wife was like why don't you jump in on this conversation and i'm like I've never worked in an office, honey. I have nothing I have to compute. Zero, I have but... nothing to contribute to <laughs> this conversation. The office, son. I've never watched the office. <laughs> I've never even that's, seen. I'm sure that's an exact. I've never worked in an office, either, but like an exaggerated. I've never seen the form, office. But... I've never watched that show. Why would I? Why would I watch that show? Right. I've never worked in an office. office. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> but um, so I'm just kind of like, yeah, okay, guys, um, yeah, and I just sort of sit there, but I started thinking about it. And um, something I've always told told my daughter of, um, like, I don't like her to say, um, like, if you give her a choice, you want to do this or this. She's like, I don't care. You know, and I, I say, don't say that. And I was told her when she was little, I said, don't say that. I say, I'm good either way. Mm -hmm. I said, because mm -hmm. words matter. Yeah. What you choose to say matters. Mm -hmm. And to say, I don't care, do what you want, is very different than, I'm good either way. Yeah. Yeah. You know, good either way is a much, it's much more positive. And then on the, on the sort of flip side of that is also knowing, um, sort of part two of this conversation we'll go into is I, I've been reading um, the inner game of tennis. Yeah. And I'm at the I'm still at the beginning of it. He's talking about like, it's it's uh, good to not you know not put people down, but it's also good to not give any compliments, because yeah, compliments yeah. can be like just just you know, um, I don't have the words can be an insult in disguise. Sure, I agree. And he's like, just be neutral. Just look at it for what it is. The ball landed there. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so I was thinking about just, A, just choosing positive words. Because that's, if you want to see me at like peak anxiety, you put me around my in-laws. Mm -hmm. yeah, like yeah. it's, I know, yeah, yeah, yeah. oh, I'm for horrible. Sure. I just sit there and I'm like, but I also have, um, you know, Batman in me has a strategy for that. Yeah. Of, I'm very quiet. I make sure I have my good coffee, and I'm also extremely positive because I'm a positive person anyway. Mm -hmm. But everything, you know, has a good spin on it. Yeah. No matter what, because I'm I'm at peak anxious and I'm freaking out anyway. So I'm like, this could uh, if I do that wrong, I could snowball into just yeah, horribleness. Yeah. No, and so I want to I want to I want to snowball up. Yeah. You know? <laughs> or just stay here. Or just I stay. Can, if I can maintain. <laughs> I just want to maintain happy. You know, yeah. like cool, right? Or even just content, like not even necessarily like happy, but like you're safe. Not necessarily safe. Like safe. Well, safe's a good term, safe, man. Yeah, safe's safe, a good you're term. Good. You're mentally cool, like yeah, you know? <laughs> enough. Anyway. Yeah. And so, but and then I got that idea in my head, so I started thinking about the podcast, and I started thinking about like, oh, I'm going to talk about this with Mike. Mm -hmm. And so here we are. Yeah. But the importance of the words that you choose, um, is I think. A buzzword, right? Like a sort of a buzz topic right mm -hmm. now, to the point of cliche. But it's also very important, especially as like a teacher of children. Yeah, you know instantly. Mm -hmm. Like, and you have to be very aware. And I mean, you know, it took me a, like uh, the other day. Like I said something sort of sarcastically. Like the kid didn't, you know, cycle in. It's my my older kid, Danny. He kind of laughed and giggled. The other one was kind of like. Huh? And I was like, no, I'm just kidding, dude. Like we're just messing around. Like uh. so, I just t you know, like that. Like even if it's not like. Um, like positivity can come from simplifying your speech, like yeah. trying to say as few words and get the point across as cleanly as possible. It's like teaching jujitsu, right? Like, yeah, you know, as as few moving parts with as much effect as possible. Yeah, mm. clarity. Yeah, simplicity is clarity, man. Yeah, but, um, but yeah, just kind of like the, your like in laws and stuff like that, like. I always, like, when people start talking, like, oh, woe is me, life, stuff like that, I'm just like, oh, it makes me uncomfortable, because I'm like, I'm in a really good position, and this and that, like, so, yeah, I have, like, rough days, but, like, I don't feel that way at all, like, yeah. I don't feel that way, I've shaped my life to get away from feeling that way, because I have a natural deposition in my brain that would kind of no, put me... I'll go that way. Yeah, like, I'll yeah. go that way. So, yeah, I'll like, go that way hard. I'm like, I yeah. work really hard to 
stay out of that, you know, and like even people are talking about it, like, I'm just kind of like, I just sit there and just whatever, zone out, because like it doesn't yeah. apply to me, and I'll take on that negativity. Yeah. You know, I'm like, I don't need to fuck Yeah, it. I don't want to take it on, but also I find that I... If you can neutralize I, it, though, I, I zone out to a point, but also I, I look at it objectively. Right, right, right. Uh, without emotion. Yeah. You don't have uh, to, that's a thing. I just, like, it's an observation. Yeah. And I, I don't have to one-up that or downplay that. I just say, that's just what they're talking about. Yeah, and on top of that... And I don't gonna, put anything on it. Yeah, I mean, shit, you can't control what people are saying and doing. You can't control no. other people. And also, so. you, you can't necessarily trust your interpretation of it. Right. No, uh, perception. To, to, yeah, perception. <laughs> We're going back to perception. Exactly. To me, it seemed like they're playing the My Life is Worse game. But I also quali- I also qualified that with uh, I've never worked in an office, so I don't actually know if they are. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's that's the thing too. Like uh, <laughs> we don't know all of the details. Yeah, there's they're so just many. What, you know, and there, there's details that are implied that the people are having a conversation get. Sure. I don't get them. Yeah, like I don't get this. So I'm I'm nonsense. seeing this. I'm seeing a, I'm seeing something in this wrong. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You know, and to be aware of that. Uh, helps a lot mm-hmm. but then you know also to have in, in my back pocket thinking about what i'm going to say to you like huh i really want to chat about this mm-hmm. yeah <laughs> was uh was also very helpful thanks mike appreciate that thank you for existing even in my imagination got you dog mm. Mm. <laughs> but yeah like the person i mean every time we do an episode like the following week i'm always thinking about what we're so, doing um, so like, brain, I'm yeah. like oh yeah perception and this and that like yeah you can't control other people's, therefore you can't control other people's perceptions. So, like, you need to be deliberate with what you're saying and doing and mm-hmm. how you're doing it and saying it. Because, like, someone like me, like, I just, I always think of myself because I think of, I'm a very extreme example of, like, emotional whatever. Like, I yeah. feel shit. <laughs> like, yeah. So, I'm like, if you're putting out weird vibes in the room, like, I'll know. I'm picking I'm up that feeling weird. I'm yeah. picking up the weird vibes. And yeah. then I'll start spreading weirdness and being weird and it's not going to be yeah, you know, you have conducive to... to learning and whatnot. So, like, yeah. Um, that's just coming from like my experience of coming up in a shitty room and being the way I, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. Uh, being able to separate though, coming up and being able to notice that that was shitty yeah. and also understanding kind of that flow of you get you caught in the flow. Can you step out of it? Well, there's other parts and, too. Like I have my own mental. Yeah. I mean, yeah, 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 yeah stuff that too. Shit. Yeah. But yeah. yeah, it's, it's, we had our own kind of fortitude in our brains going on, but still day to day stuff like that. Like, mm-hmm. um, yeah, I just, I try not to, and I, I mean, if I do say something negative, I'll like, like try and spin it into something positive. Like I'll try and be like, oh yeah, this yeah, isn't that great, but we do this way. to have this not happen. You know, like right. I don't or, be like you fucking suck, and like that's the end. Yeah, or if I do say something, I say negative. I try to turn it into a statement. Mm-hmm. Oh, but if it's not good, let's be honest. Yeah, that yeah. really wasn't good. But here's why. Yeah, and here's why that's it's good thing that you made that mistake. Mm-hmm. Like, okay, cool, and you build off it so that you see, like, even things that could be perceived of as negative aren't mistakes or steps. Yeah. If you if you want to yeah. call it a mistake, it's more like a step, yep. especially if you're learning something. Like, you know. Then do you think that happens because people are such, like, A to B thinkers? They're not, they're not like, thinking big picture, you think? Or, like... Uh, uh, well, then they don't know how. Kind of, yeah, yeah. Um, and plus, I mean, you're not trained to... Sure. Um, I don't know what schools seem a little bit better, but I'm only talking from like what my daughter tells me and she kind of spins stuff the way I spin stuff. Right. But, um, you're very much, you don't get a lot of training in how to, that, well, how to, what am I trying to say? How to use failure as a, as an opportunity mm-hmm. Yeah. of you get a D on a test, you suck, we're moving on. Not, oh. There's my this. holes. Yeah, yeah. And then you get another step. But uh, da, da, da. you know, I think I think there's more opportunity to think like that now, at least in elementary school. Yeah, that's but, really interesting. But um, yeah. martial arts was really my only outlet for such a thing. Yeah. Of uh, mistake was I got kicked in the face. Well, what did I do? I stepped here when I should have stepped there. Mm-hmm. Okay, let's recreate that situation in slow mo. I'm gonna step here. Here's a dodge. Yeah. And you kind of so go through stuff like that. You know, or you know, but um. The school is an interesting parallel. Because, I mean, A, like, school, the school system in America, you get grades and stuff and, you know, whatnot, right? Mm -hmm. Uh, I used to be, or am, or was, like, I used to be in school, probably the only subject that I was passionate about was, like, history and English. Like, I like writing. and I like history and English uh, as well. Yeah, and, like, I would write things that I really loved and, like, really enjoyed and was passionate about, and they'd slap a fucking F on it. I'm like, Like, damn, can you give me something constructive on that? Yeah, they wouldn't tell me anything with it, so I'm like... 
Okay. Now I just feel like shit. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like, well, now damn, I just feel like I'm a piece work. of shit writer, you know. And then like if I do ask, like, what is this? And like, you know, it's it's. I understand teachers are busy and shit, but like, yeah, they don't have the time, man. They yeah. don't have the time, dude. It's yeah. okay. Yeah. And, like yeah, and I don't like hold grudges against teachers or anything, but like mm. I needed help, and I you know kind of yeah. got. Well, that's off. that's the structure, man. Yeah. That's you know jujitsu is perfect. We're the ones who fuck it up. Yeah. You know that's, it's that's yeah. What they're doing is they're they're good. It's mm-hmm. the system that's screwed. Yeah. Yeah. You know it's kind of the opposite. <laughs> right, the system, yeah. yeah, but uh, yeah. yeah so, it's, it's, but just like thinking about that, and like I've had some teachers make me make me feel like straight up, you know, like I was straight up an idiot. So I'll never yeah. try and portray that onto someone. Mm-hmm. Yeah, else. I've had that. I've had that both ways. You know? the teachers that make you feel horrible and teach me feel like a superhero. Yeah, and like the way that they and made you feel like a superhero wasn't necessarily like this massive grandiose thing. It was like, hey, good job. Yeah, it was yeah, literally it was like, 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 or they just, just wrote decent. something nice on what they graded you. Yeah, or like, and even if it was, it was a bad, it was, it was like sincere. Yeah, it was just like, sincere. Good job, was, good work. Yeah. You know, not to say that like I need fucking pats on the back or anything, but it's when you're doing something like that, an assignment right. or something, you're looking for feedback. Like, subtle encouragement is cool, man. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you know, but that's, and that's a positive language thing. Like, you know, I mean, I talk about um, my struggles in college, mm-hmm. of, and particularly in exercise physiology, picking a thing that I'm really not great at mm-hmm. and choosing to major in that because it's fascinating yeah you know and i literally you know dr gilders would apologize to me on tests he graded stuff in red so my my tests would die yeah, yeah he'd be like i'm so sorry that i had to do this even one time he was i was talking to him as he was grading my test and he goes i hate to do this to you man yeah this is so horrible yeah. like you're really good but I have to mark this wrong. I'm just, yeah. Yeah. And he would like, he would always sort of put that in there. Yeah. It's like I, a compliment I, sandwich kind of thing. Like, yeah. You know what I, mean? like, I, I appreciate that, dude. Yeah. 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 Like that, yeah. Like, obviously, it could be like, you fucked up this, do this, and just, you know, he'd be a bitch about it. Yeah, you know? totally. You could. Yeah. Like, and it, busy people, they don't have time for that shit. But yeah. sometimes people find a way to make it, and it's just simple little things. Yeah. And I, uh, I, I need to do that more. Like, you know, it's, it takes practice. Absolutely. Yeah. You know, and, and it takes the mindfulness to, realize when you need to do that and when you should just shut up and listen you know what i mean like <laughs> yeah there's a there's a rhythm there's a rhythm fine you got to find you how you fit into it yeah no what to say and all yeah. that yeah but yeah that just and then the, yeah you parallel to martial arts like you know several times like i'm trying to think of like specific instances but like you're throwing kicks or something or you're rolling you're doing an arm bar whatever like even if there's like a nod of approval it's better than like just like getting in your face. I'm like, what the fuck? Are you? I've had like uh, was yeah. that Toledo and tournament this past weekend, and there's, there's some coaches that I've seen a few at a few tournaments, and they're like, what are you doing? Like cussing at these people, like like I'm like I'm like these people are like probably putting food in your mouth and shit, and like you're treating them treating them like this, like you can't yeah. fucking do that. Like how do they even stay? Like no, nah, man. And people don't understand the difference. You can always tell people that have only trained at one place. Yeah, yeah. They think that's the universe, man, and that's how it all works. And they're like, yeah. no, like I, that's why I always encourage people to travel. Yeah. And when you travel, train. Train, do. Train at different schools, different diff- meet different people, experience other environments and realize that there's only, there's more than one way to do this. Yeah. That's why I'm so excited about this camp. Oh yeah. That's why I'm so fucking pumped. My, one of my buddies went to, went in Maine. And yeah. He said it was like, it was like the best thing he's ever done. Like, so cool. So and if like, it's run right, man. Yeah, the dude who runs it, like, he has a book, I read it, and, like, yeah? I was like, oh, shit, he's done all of this, and, like, was organizing this the way he does, because he fucked it all up. Oh, good, okay. <laughs> you know what I mean? He's like, oh, I did this, this, and this, and it was a fucking wash, or this didn't work out, so, like, he's just really streamlining that process. That's really cool. Which I think is massively important and underrated in the jiu-jitsu community. Well, like community, Especially period. Now. Yeah, yeah. I think it's yeah. just communities in general. Sure. People don't streamline. Yeah. People don't go out and just screw things up. And then, you know, just because just you got to try. Yeah. They don't just go out and just try. That's and why, then, that's like, and then, for instance, our difference between documentation and then, like, perfect content on our social media. Like, we, if we sat on a piece of picture or whatever and, like, tried to make it perfect, we'd sit there and even, pick it for three days. I don't even know what that is, we'd man. We'd miss the opportunity to post miss it. it you know? Yeah, and you'd take the opportunity and roll with it, and then opportunities on, will get better. Get fuck. Yeah. Yeah, get better as you train by doing, dude. Yeah, like, seriously. You know, Michelangelo right there. That's how we fucking do it. Yeah. And that's the thing. Like, we don't know what the fuck we're doing, really. Like, we're just winging it and seeing what yeah. works and what pushes speaking, us speaking forward. Of not knowing what the fuck you're doing. Um, <laughs> when I was hanging out with the in-laws, um, someone was asking me like about the podcast. Oh yeah, yeah. Because um, 
he was funny. He's like, so how, like, I didn't know how to answer his questions. Yeah. Because he's like, how do you do it? I'm like, uh, we record it and I put it on a computer and I edit it up a little bit and I put it online. He goes, yeah, but how? And like, I'm on like, a computer. I'm like, on a, <laughs> like, he's like, no, but like, where do you, I'm like, oh, Podbean. Yeah. Okay. So uh, there's a hosting thing called Podbean yeah, yeah, and yeah. you can do it for free. There's a thing, or you can do like a yearly membership that I have. Yeah, yeah. And, <laughs> and from there, that's how, you know, I applied to iTunes and it's on there. And then I have a separate thing. I put it, made an account on YouTube that's, you can go to for free. And he goes, oh, okay. And like, I didn't realize what he meant that step. Right, right, right. <laughs> you know, it's like, I don't know what I'm doing. Yeah, no, like, <laughs> you know? uh, I mean... Uh, watching podcasts. I've been watching a lot of podcasts, like mm-hmm. to see what they. Mm-hmm. Have I've been watching. Going on, like, you know what I've been watching for video content because I want to do a video version of this yeah. up on YouTube. Absolutely. I've been watching the camera angle. Uh, okay. Well, no, no, just oh, in, oh, in, oh, like the actual angle of the camera. Talk about like explaining shit. Sorry. Podcast. <laughs> but no, no, but camera angles. Yeah, of, yeah, so yeah. you get like your high end podcasts that have multiple cameras. Mm-hmm. And they're clipping around. They're clipping around. I'm like that's a lot I don't even know how to like that's a learning curve and I don't want that many cameras then you have other ones where it's one camera and they figure out how to get the people in the podcast in the shot mm-hmm. and I'm that? like and like I need to I need to email flow grappling and be like what camera do you guys use like I need that camera yeah like because their yeah, their their vlogs are great like they did that world's vlog where they traveled all mm-hmm. over California which I've copied a couple drills off of yeah thank you right. um, <laughs> which is really good and like, yeah. and like they do one they do the one camera thing you know, and then there's other like, there's other other um, video versions of podcasts that I, I've I've watched that have the one camera angle, yeah. and I'm trying to figure that out. And I want to have our video content be that because yeah. that's yeah. that's simple. Mm-hmm. And, but it adds so much. But it adds a lot. You get to kind of see us yeah. and like you know I and don't like, have to I don't have to say I'm doing air quotes anymore. Yeah, right. word. You can, like, just yeah. see them and yeah. fucking yeah. get it. Um, mm. But again, like relates me back to the piece. It's that human touch. Like, that's, mm-hmm. you know, it's not just... It's a little more human. And I think listening is great, but again, like, the gesticulations and our facial expressions yeah. and, like, yeah. you know, that oh, it plays into Oh, speaking it of human touch, it's funny that I've gotten to chat with, um... I have a, one of my family members occasionally listens to the podcast. Yeah, love it. And, um... Shout out. <laughs> yeah, shout out. Um, I don't know how comfortable you are with being mentioned on it, so yeah. I'll, just, I'll just say that. You know who you are. Uh, but, um... <laughs> I, think, I think it was her that said it was just, like... It's just listening to some people talk in a coffee shop. Yep. And I'm like, yes, that's, that's inadvertently kind of what we're going for. Yeah. You know, just, we're chatting. People and, like to eavesdrop. We're and you're eavesdropping. <laughs> yeah. You're there getting people like fly to fly on the wall between our conversation. Yeah. Yeah. And so, so I'm like, yeah. hey, cool. All right. <laughs> just, it's that with a positive spin. Just do it and yeah. listen. And we like it and give some feedback. Yeah. <laughs> oh. Like, it's just approved voyeurism. Like, come watch us do whatever. Like, yeah. You know? Yeah. Like, I've approved voyeurism. <laughs> like, we're just sitting there. If we video it, we have to put our pants on. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> we'll just be waced up. They don't know if we have pants on. Oh, that's It'll be true. Like up to that's the, true. It'll those, yes. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> like, I've been watching a lot of, like, comedians. Like, a lot of their podcasts. Ooh, like, yeah. Um, it's really interesting because, like, they have... Uh, the parallels between comedy and jiu-jitsu are funny. Oh, like, fun. They have, like, workout stages. They have stages that they go and train stuff and try stuff. Oh, that neat. they wouldn't, like tape or something or put out there necessarily and then they have like their specials or their big stages where they go and perform and so, like, good stuff local out, tournaments yeah. big dream yeah, I mean, yeah. t- test stuff out and then go and put it up yeah. um, but then on top of that just like the networking that goes on between them like they help each other out they go on each other's podcast they promote each other's podcast you know what I mean like, mm-hmm. that sort of thing um, mm-hmm. granted they're comedians so it's like they roast the shit out of each other and just like you know uh, that's trying to be do. funny so that's yeah, the job funny. but like yeah. um, I just think that's what really made me um, look into the human side of it, mm-hmm. like the, just the human aspect of it. It's like there's a lot of comedians and shit. Like there's only a couple comedians that like only had like one or two specials that I'd ever seen. Yeah. So I'm like, I don't really like understand them as a person. Or you know, you start to listen to them on, on a podcast. You're like, oh shit, they're 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 yeah. rounded out. They're an actual yeah. person. You see where they're coming from. Oh, you know, like um, take when uh, fighters start doing commentary. Yeah. Uh, there's a host of people that worked on Fox that I hated. As fighters, but after as a commentator, I started to see them as human, mm-hmm. and I'm a fan. Like Michael Bisbing would be my number one pick. Yeah, hated Michael Bisbing. Yeah, hated him for years. Like, it was horrible. And then he started commentating, and you know, after a few months of watching him commentate, I was like, I like Michael Bisbing. Mm-hmm. I'm glad he got the title shot. 
Yeah. I was rooting for him when he knocked out Rock Holt. Yeah. 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 And you know, he got in the Hall of Fame and I'm all happy for him. Uh, yeah, you, I'm like, I like dude, a, I like a good change of heart like that. Like, yeah, it's really <laughs> nice. You know, but like that's so many like commentators that if you just see someone as a fighter, it starts to put in perspective of, oh, cool, in fight mode. Yes, possibly you're going to be a dick because someone's going to try to kick you in the face and yeah. punch you and hurt yeah. you and you have to do the same to them. Yeah. That's the place you need to be. Yep. But you're not fighting. Or like take Dominic Cruz. Mm -hmm. Another guy I hated. Great Absolutely just but great commentator, cool person, would love to hang out with that dude. Yeah. Like really That's like thing. him. Like, yeah. You see their probably I mean some of the worst traits of their personality when they're fighting. You yeah. Know? But then you come back, and that's like, all you get access to. Yeah. And so then you like, dial it back, and you let them talk a little bit. And you go, okay, cool. Oh, wow. Like, it's pretty good. You're, yeah. you're like, you're a nice guy. Well, you just learn that they're a good. fucking idiot, too. Or, you know, that too. Learn, like, that too. You learn that they're broken, unhappy, and, you know, fucking yeah, but, whatever. But or, you still learn who they really are. Yeah, the mask gets like, oh, taken away. that's something to avoid. Like, yeah. that type of mindset, you know, whatever. Like, yeah. That's absolutely, I think it's hmm. impaired. That's what I think, again, the podcast fucking writing thing. But, like, that's what makes it different. It shows people, it, it gives people to tell the story from their side to be like, oh, I fucked up and did this and like, you know, yeah. kind of put light to it. Or it just gives them the opportunity to make, make fun of themselves first. Yeah. And then let everything else come mm -hmm. at it. You know, well, I was fine. listening to that Ben Askren interview before he walked in. Yeah, yeah. And now he's like, yeah, I got knocked out. Who cares? And all like, and Ariel Hawani's trying to get him to say bad stuff like, "Oh, Masvidal I'll hit you a few times after you're knocked out. How do you feel about that?" He goes, "Didn't feel it. I, I, prob <laughs> I probably deserved it. In fact, I know I deserved He's it. Like, I got in the cage. It's with him. okay. I, yeah, like I got in the cage with him, and I said a lot of stuff about him before I got in the cage. Yeah, I definitely deserve those few shots. Yeah. So what? Who cares? Okay." <laughs> But it's done. That's <laughs> coming from someone who's also run through the Olympics and he's experienced yeah. that. He was talking about how losing at the Olympics hurt way more. I imagine. I mean, because that's your only shot in life at that. Mm -hmm. Like, maybe maybe you make it again four years later. Maybe. Maybe. But, like, yeah, he's like... In eight months again, probably. Six yeah, months. he's like, yeah, like, look, Masvidal lost two in a row before he won two in a row and now is being considered for a title shot. Yeah. Like, ooh, Things I lost... <laughs> yeah, I lost once. Maybe I go win a couple and I have a ton of shots. So what? Yeah, okay. yeah I like But also, like, a flash knockout off the, the starting bell of a knee. Like, you, know, you don't see that often, but, like... No. Well, that's the funny thing, too, he was saying. is something I've always said is if you're going to get beat, get beat in spectacular fashion. Hell yeah. Like, in my <laughs> mind, a win's a win. Like, I would rather win spectacularly, but if I win boring, I still win. I know. But, yeah. like, on a personal level, if I get beat boring... It's emotionally devastating. Yeah. But if I get beat like in like Flash, crazy yeah. super awesome thing, like at least it's a good story. Cool. Yeah. Yeah. And like Baskin was saying that he says, I hold a record now. Fastest knockout. Yeah. Even though I was he's the one like, knocked out. <laughs> yeah. He's like, it's cool. Yeah. Like, like it's like he's like, Yeah, if you're gonna lose, like, why would you get knocked out in twenty four seconds? That's mundane. I got knocked out in five. Yeah. Like, yeah. yeah. Like, yeah. I got that shit done. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Got out there, did work, went face down, got out of there. <laughs> yeah, but I mean, and, you know, it's that's a pos not just not just a positive spin, but it's put it in its place. Yeah, it's, it's not too one much. one thing; it happened. He'll move and, on. He's moved on. You know, on. and moved on. Like that's really cool. Yeah. Like that will be. You know, it's not a grudge. It's not a chip. It's not a. It's an event. Yeah. And that's clearly, it didn't define him. I hate it when dudes get on whatever after interviews and just start spouting off stuff. It's just like, why can't you just go back to the gym and train and humble up and get better and fucking win and then get yeah. a nice positive interview? But I mean, well, you know, I haven't. He, he put that. He, I'm giving him quoting Ben Askren. Talk about another guy I used to hate and now I freaking love. Because um, uh, I enjoy I enjoy his trash talk now because it's not just cocky anymore. Yeah. Now it's truth with it's like a biting truth yeah, 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 yeah. like it's it, yeah it's a scathing it's scathing truth mm -hmm. in a funny way now which is actually pretty cool and to see him get knocked out like that and not whine about it that's like that, that's that awesome it out. yeah it rounds, rounds it out perfect it out. like yeah he really doesn't give a shit he really is just hyping fight cool yeah. like chael it's, it's like didn't second come with chael sonnen in a way but um but a little more relaxed <laughs> yeah a little more relaxed yeah less of a character yeah um but uh I just, I thought that was really cool. Yeah. I can't remember was where I was going with that shit. I lost it. Lost my train of thought. But, um, to put it, yeah, just to kind of have it, this thing as an event. Yeah. And it's done. Uh, regardless of the result. Regardless of the result, it's over. And he said, he was talking about the difference between, oh, that's what I was going to, between now and losing at the Olympics. Uh -huh. A, the Olympics is a bigger deal because that's probably the only chance you'll ever get. But he's like, when I went to the Olympics, that was the only thing in my life. Yeah. I spent, you know, 
almost pretty much my entire life building up to that, and that's all I cared about. Yeah. And then he lost and he was And that's it. Heart-wrenching. And he's like, now I have a lot of other things in my life that I care about, and this mm-hmm. is just one thing. It's an aspect. Yeah, it's an aspect. And, I mean, I'll still get a title shot if I win a couple. Like, who cares? You know? And, yeah, but he's like, yeah, I... I that's this yeah, other stuff. That's the human side a lot of, of a lot of these athletes. You know, uh, look at your John Joneses and your just massive champions. You know that have you know reigned for a long time and this and that. Like <laughs> John Jones almost lost. Oh, dude. I don't he's, know. He's I, he's I heard married. that fight. I heard a lot of people like that was a split decision. Yeah. And uh, yeah, yeah, a lot of people. His face was a little Santos torn did up. that on one leg, still, man. Yeah, like he yeah. still got him <laughs> enough yeah. anyway. Yeah. Get back on that coke, dog. <laughs> yeah, seriously. Uh, sorry to interrupt. Starting, but yeah. The um, champions that have reigned for a long time. Yeah, just like, you think like, oh, they're just always on, they're always fucking this. Like, dude, that's not the case. No, I think your best champions are hardly ever on. Yeah. Yeah. But like, when the moment counts. That they turn on when they need to. Or like, when they're training, there's levels to the training. They're getting something out of today. They're not, they don't have to win everything in the, in the gym. They're getting something out of today. Yeah. And that's it. And then it's time to compete. Time to go, and when we're done, it's done. That's like, a switch that people always talk about. Like, oh, you can't just flip a switch. Like, that's the difference. That actually flip can switch. flip a switch. <laughs> yeah, like when I was younger, like I was on all the time. Yeah, and it was always fight mode, always train mode, yep. and it burnt me out real bad. And then I started to learn how to flip the switch, you balance it, and it balanced it out a bit better. You but get it was stronger. You yeah, get better. <laughs> made it a lot better, but it was kind of toward the end anyway. Right, right. And then you know injuries mounted up and all that shit, and then the game changed, and I didn't want to play it anymore. Yeah, yeah. But um, like now I understand the switch. Right. And like I can flip the switch on and off. Mm-hmm. Like I don't necessarily like the person I am when the switch is when I flip the switch. Yeah. Like that's it's like it's like. Uh, yeah. I saw a meme. I think Aaron posted or somebody posted. It was like, don't be just the Hulk and don't be just it, but be Professor Hulk. Like don't just be Banner or the Hulk, but be Professor Hulk. Like be both. Have the right. Yeah. Thing ever. Well. <laughs> yeah. I mean, when I flip the switch, it's definitely Hulk. Like it's yeah. definitely go. But you know, if I roll that back, I do hang out in that Professor Hulk realm a lot. Mm-hmm. But also, I just you know, like anymore. It's just, you know, especially with training, it's just, what am I getting out of tonight? Yeah, yeah. And it's simple, something like, I got to find my flow. Mm-hmm. And I started finding my habits again. And I'm like, I'm going after arms. All right, so I'm going to roll tonight, and I'm going to go for arm bars. Yeah. Everything, yeah. if I'm going to roll, I'm going after arms. Because I seem to be gra- grabbing those grips and doing stuff with my legs. I'm like, all right. And the nice thing know. is, like, mm-hmm. that's in your head right now. You go in, you might not fucking touch an arm tonight. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's possible. It's totally <laughs> possible. Touch an arm. Yeah. Like, you might fall into something else and be like, oh, fuck, I'm looking for arm bars, but this is right here. You might either see it or you might not see it or, you know, whatever. But, mm-hmm. but what it opens up <laughs> yeah. is now I've kind of found, like, my way in. Yeah. And now that's the way in I think that's like a little more success. people need. It's just mm-hmm. the way in. They see all of this stuff wrapped in a ball and a pretty fucking yeah, paper like, thing. Like, yeah, how, what do you... or how do I breach that? Like, yeah, you got to have... That was always something that was in my brain. I was like, how the fuck, you know? Yeah. So start doing it. <laughs> but yeah, just go after one thing and it'll open up all things. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And just to know that that's going to happen, that's sort of a weird trust. Uh, it's trusting uh, fucking cosmos a little bit, just seeing what's up. Like, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But yeah, like I've decided that I'm going for those types of grips. Yeah. So I'm going to go for arms. Yep. And whatever comes out of that, comes out of that. Mm-hmm. Uh, hey, cool. Sometimes uh-huh. and the next piece will come out of that. You might think an armbar will come out of it, like, oh, I need to do this now. Like, mm-hmm. that's why jujitsu is so slow. <laughs> the progression. Yep. You gotta learn to love that process. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Some people have that. Like naturally, they're like, boom, got it. Yep. Don't care if I have to do it ten jillion times. You know. And then you have some people like, oh, three times, I'm cool. Like, ah. Yeah. So much more to it. <laughs> yeah. yeah. That's just the spread out. It's like. Look at jujitsu timelines. You know anyone's jujitsu timeline. I guarantee you, it's going to be stretched out and weird and like. I mean, kind of depending. Because I always wanted to take a dude like, like Gordon Ryan. Didn't he train for three years and get a black belt or something? Something like that. Something but he was, but like, how long? But like, Tony, like Gordon Ryan is, like, sort of a strictly Danaher student, right? Seemingly, yeah. yeah. But like, like Gary, whereas Gary Tonin came from somewhere else, kind of and kind He's of molded in because like in. So, but how, and you've trained with him, you've trained sort of, does that systematic approach, are you stuck in the system or does the system open up things? 
And then you have it, it's, it's a system just the way in of where like, I've always, I want to, I want to train in, in, in the sort of that, the Danny here system to see yeah. if the interconnected systems are sort of independent themselves mm -hmm. and that's what you have. Or does the system create an understanding that is, that's your door, so you can do anything with it? Yeah, so like, just for instance, like something that I took from like that seminar with them is like, it wasn't even a leg lock thing, which was so hot at the time, but yeah. like, um, and I don't, I, I don't know if, and that's the thing, I don't know if ever anyone took what I took from that aspect, or that portion of it, but like, a lot of it, yeah, like you're saying, a lot of it was kind of the key. Like the, the system is the key to the uh, the understanding of it. Okay. Like once you start to get in there and like feel that, like and then you start to understand the, the flow and positions and like hopefully applying your mechanical stuff to it. Yep. Right, your actual your actual technique and stuff, um, and applying it into the actual movement and system and possibilities and what you shouldn't be doing. Like once you start looking at it like that. Yeah. Um, that's where you start to realize the nitty gritty of it. Like it starts, you start to hold up the light to the shit you don't know. And okay. that's where the details fill in. But in terms of like practicality, like I needed less information to make it something that clicked with me quicker. I needed less info. I needed like three or four concepts. They were okay. giving like Dana Harry and like full explanations of it, which is great. And like, I, I, that was um, uh, its own valuable thing. But like, just like for my own personal learning, like uh, but I needed... Were you able to see, like, is the skeleton of the system the way in? Of uh, just basic positions, basic entries that uh, connect? I wasn't there with them enough okay. to know, uh, like, firsthand, but... I'm strongly thinking about investing in the Gi system uh -huh. they got coming out now, because it's, sh it's shit that I like. It's, it's getting off bottom and retaining yeah. guard. The pitting Those, yeah, that's, one, that's yeah. my stuff. Right. That's yeah. one like, <laughs> that I would really like to see. Mm -hmm. Um... I think I think they did it interestingly by releasing all the crazy high level leg lock stuff first and then coming back down to that. Just, but yeah. I well, I mean, talk about like choice of language. Yeah. Choice of using the positivity of that's basic sales technique. Reel yeah. them in with the flash and bang. Right, right, right. And then then you realize that the flash bang isn't it's just good. It's right. not flashy and banging. It's just it's just cool content, mm -hmm. but it's high it's hot. At the moment, they still sell. Feel <laughs> sell, and then that that then you start to realize, oh well, crap, that's really good stuff. Like, I have almost currently, I think I have all but one of Travis Stevens' videos. Yeah, I'm, I'm yeah. really into Travis Stevens' thought process. Mm -hmm. I haven't got the grips one yet. I gotta get the grips one. Grips. Um, but uh, that was initially why I bought it. They put out the I don't know if it was the Juju Katami one or the Judo Academy one mm -hmm. that I got first. It was one of those. But I simply bought those because uh, Jimmy Pedro and Travis Stevens were doing them. Mm -hmm. Two guys that I like. And I, I like how they think. I like what they do. I love Jimmy Pedro as a coach. Mm -hmm. Travis Stevens as a competitor. And I thought, I'm just, I'm a judo. I love judo. Yeah. Uh, like, boom, I just got it. You know, and that sort of drew me in. But then I really enjoyed the content. It was really useful for me. And it was... Like, you know, one or two things out of these whole videos that just spark some stuff. Mm -hmm. And I'll go back and watch them again and get a couple more things. And I was like, all right, yeah, I'm just getting all that. And I wait for yeah. it to go on sale and I snatch it and, you know. That's the floodgate that can happen with that sort of stuff. But yeah, if you find something that just you understand and then go with it. Yeah. Uh, Even, if, yeah, like, uh, just look at back to podcasts like we don't know all the stuff about podcasts but we started one we're doing just it doing it anyway we're white belts whatever but we're yeah. getting there <laughs> like, we got a few stripes we're gonna, now we're getting yeah. better we're, we got uh, however many episodes you know? uh, 22 yeah. this is episode 22 i believe Boom. yeah no so but yeah it's just jujitsu taught me to just take the first step and do anything <laughs> yeah just I mean? dive in yeah whether it's getting a dvd and digging into your jujitsu whether it's getting fucking some like app that helps you like design logo you know what i mean like there's something else that yeah or i mean you don't have to just huh? getting a grip and see what happens yeah yeah <laughs> yeah like just see what happens like, yeah don't sit on it too long uh. like the, uh, when i first started doing judo and like there's a time where i didn't do jujitsu for a minute and like was only doing judo um and I remember my coach saying, Sean, 
um, just being grip and throw, grip and throw, grip and throw. It wasn't like a grip and, you know, this, that, it was yeah. grip and throw. So oh. um, that took me years to like implement and do. Um, but that's the, the shortness of the gap that you have, right? Mm -hmm. But that in itself, that time that you have between the throw and the grip and whatnot is, is that's the difference between a white and a black belt, you know, like the space. The space, the yeah. The space, the time, yeah. the, the effort you do. Like, yeah. Um, and it's funny how it's all the same thing. Yeah. You had white belt and a black belt, it's still the same throw and the same grip exactly and the same. the same. And it's the that weird space that changes. Yeah. And your comprehension of the space, because even the time of the space may not change. But what you do with that time can just be, be totally infinitely different. greater as, as a black belt than as a white belt. It's That's hours as a black belt. That's hours of fucking up, too. Yeah. <laughs> but it, success. Well, hours of fucking up and success, but that, if you have like that second gap. Yeah. A second is a really short time if you don't know what the hell's going on. Mm -hmm. But if you really know what's up, a second is might as well be two hours. Yeah. Of uh, you just you're thinking it, you're just kind of going through and then making a sandwich and doing a grocery list and then back in here and and it's still the same second, yeah. still the same motion, but it's that much more refined and it's familiar and it's you know, there's so your difference. Good. Yeah, but oh. That's, so yeah, I mean, I'm always on the train of everyone should do some martial arts and jujitsu and just get in there and experience that positivity. Yeah, agreed. And I just yeah. you know how you look at it. You're talking about choosing language to describe it. Yeah. Of um. You have to you have to pick different words. You can't pick words like failure and loss and fuck up. Yeah, yeah. And you know we can use those words now because they're funny. Right. But because we've already been through the negative side of it, we're at the other end. <laughs> yeah. You know, but like when you do something, you know, there's, you can't say I did this wrong. Yeah. You just did a way that it you have to kind working. of so like, even if you're drilling, even if you're doing something very specific, like there are no wrong moves. You might be doing, you might have messed up what you were supposed to do because what you're drilling, but take count of it. Yeah. Say, all right, that position is that. Okay, cool. Now let's go back and, you know, I find, you know, what teacher just told me to do. Yeah. But you can't think of it as wrong because there are like, if you think of something as wrong, then you're stopped. Yeah. And you can't it adjust. Immediately resets the it, whole counter. <laughs> yeah. And you also realize, you also, clearly you've never been in a real life situation. Yeah. Because everything that, everything, like, especially in a competition, I'm going to guarantee that no one meant to do exactly what they did. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, they started out with a purpose in mind. And that took a that took a quick left, and they just had to go with it. Yeah, that's <laughs> and, the thing. Do you go just, with it or do you okay. fucking eat it? Yeah. You know? like, but if you stop, <laughs> then that's when you die. Yeah. You know, and yeah, but just having to be uh, be able to choose how you explain that to yourself. Yep. I think is um. Yeah. A progression in training. Like, I feel like I confuse people when I train because I'm a white belt, but I have that mentality. So they just yeah. they, a lot of times people just think I'm a dumbass. <laughs> Uh, that like, I'm not taking it seriously. Yeah, yeah. Even though, like, I'm really fucking serious about this. Right. I just know where I'm at. You know, and I'm like, oh, no, that's fine. Like, I put my hand in this spot when it should be in this spot. Yeah. Okay, cool. No. <laughs> and, it's like, yeah, it's from, like, a teaching aspect, like, coming over to correct something like that. Like, as, oh, yeah, yeah. You know, something, they know that something is wrong with it. Like, so how you start to fix that can really start to. Yeah, and you, what you choose, yeah. what you choose to say and how you choose to approach that yeah. is, um, makes all the difference in the world, man. Mm -hmm. um, Whenever somebody fucks something up, like, I'm almost like, you know, it's cool. It's cool. We're going to fix it. Like, I'm almost like, you know what? Mm -hmm. We're always doing that. Like, yeah, praise then correct. Yeah. Like, yeah. It's fucking fine. Yeah. <laughs> like, dude, like, I fucked everything up. Like, yeah. 10 jillion times. So, like, it's fine. Yeah. You're human. It's, it's okay. Here, do it. Yeah. Are you almost out of time? Yeah, I gotta hit the class. Oh, dang, yeah, I forgot. Got no geese today, baby. No gee. All right, my man. Yeah. Well, we're about done then. Nice job. Oh, 30 more seconds. We'll hit that 54. Keep that coffee regular. Yes. Peace out, y'all. on Instagram. <laughs> yeah, Instagram, Facebook, all your favorite stuff. <laughs> peace. All right. Peace out, y'all. Or peace in. Huh?